March 16th, 2026. Mark your calendar, because that's the day 3i Atlas arrives at Jupiter. Not just near Jupiter, within Jupiter's hill radius, the gravitational boundary where Jupiter's pull dominates over the suns. And here's what makes this wild. It's passing within 30 million kilometers of one of Jupiter's irregular moons, Euphemi, a two kilometer rock captured from somewhere else. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is what happens if 3i Atlas leaves something behind. Subscribe right now, turn on notifications. Because what I'm about to show you is Avi Loeb's test for whether this thing is natural or artificial, and it's brilliantly simple. All right, so let's talk about what's actually happening. 3i Atlas entered the solar system 8,000 years ago, traveled through the Oort cloud at 100,000 times the Earth-Sun distance, swung past the sun, and now it's heading back out. Next stop, Jupiter, March 16th, 2026. The object will pass within 53.61 million kilometers of Jupiter. That's inside Jupiter's hill radius of 53.5 million kilometers. For reference, the hill radius is the boundary where a planet's gravity dominates. Interior to that boundary, Jupiter's pull is stronger than the sun's tidal forces. That means 3i Atlas is entering Jupiter's gravitational sphere of influence. And one day later, March 17th, it passes within 30, 46 million kilometers of Euphemi, one of Jupiter's 95 known moons. Now, Euphemi isn't special on its own. It's an irregular moon, part of the Ananke group, 15 satellites with similar orbits thought to come from a captured parent body that broke apart. These moons orbit opposite to Jupiter's spin, highly elliptical and inclined orbits. That's consistent with capture, not formation. So Euphemi is just a rock, a relic, nothing unusual, but the timing is interesting. Euphemi will reach its farthest distance from Jupiter, 27.7 million kilometers on January 23rd, just 52 days before its closest passage to 3i Atlas. Coincidence? Probably. Jupiter has 95 known moons. Close encounters happen, but here's where it gets wild. Loeb asks a simple question, will 3i Atlas add new satellites to Jupiter's family? Because the proximity of this passage to the hill radius allows 3i Atlas to release daughter objects into bound orbits around Jupiter. Here's how it would work. Small objects can become gravitationally bound to Jupiter as long as they receive a kick that cancels the relative motion between 3i Atlas and Jupiter. That relative speed at closest approach? About 66 kilometers per second. So if a small probe were released from 3i Atlas with a velocity kick of 66 km s in the right direction, it could enter orbit around Jupiter. But here's the critical part. Natural physics can't do this. Let me explain why. The escape speed from Jupiter's surface is 60 km per second. That's how fast you'd need to go to break free of Jupiter's gravity if you were standing on the cloud tops. Now, for a fragment to break off a natural comet and reach 66 km s, that's impossible. Gravitational breakup of small bodies, comets, asteroids, can't generate fragments moving faster than the parent body's escape speed. And 3i Atlas is way smaller than Jupiter. Its escape speed is measured in meters per second, maybe a few kilometers per second at most. So a natural breakup can't produce a 66 km s kick. The physics doesn't allow it unless, but that's not even the hardest part. The escape speed at 3i Atlas's closest approach distance 53.61 million kilometers from Jupiter is only 2.2 kilometers per second. That means the velocity kick has to be exquisitely fine-tuned. The direction and magnitude must be designed with precision. Otherwise, the fragment either escapes Jupiter's gravity entirely or crashes into the planet. You need exactly the right velocity in exactly the right direction to achieve a stable orbit. Natural processes don't do that. Natural breakup is chaotic, random. You don't get precision targeting from ice and rock fragmenting under stress. So here's the test. If a fresh 96th moon appears around Jupiter after March 16th, 2026, that's a technological signature, not ambiguous, not could be natural with some hand waving, definitive, because the physics is clear. A natural comet can't produce the velocity kick required. The parent body isn't massive enough. The escape speed isn't high enough and the precision required to enter a stable orbit is beyond what random fragmentation can achieve. So if a new moon shows up, something released it, deliberately, 
with purpose. That would be proof. Not speculation, not probability. Proof that 3i Atlas is artificial. And the best part? We'll know. The Juno spacecraft is orbiting Jupiter right now. It'll be watching. Ground-based telescopes, the biggest we have, will be pointed at the encounter. We'll have eyes on this thing the entire time. If it deploys anything, if a new satellite appears in Jupiter's orbit after March 16th, we'll see it. So why does this test matter so much? Because it's clean. It's not open to interpretation. It's not, this looks weird, or the probability is low. It's binary. Either a new moon appears or it doesn't. If it does, physics says it can't be natural, which means it's artificial, which means 3i Atlas isn't a comet, which means we just confirmed the existence of extraterrestrial technology. If it doesn't, then the natural comet hypothesis survives. 3i Atlas passes Jupiter, heads back out into interstellar space, becomes another data point in our catalog of visitors. But either way, we get an answer. And that's rare in this field. Usually we're stuck with ambiguity. Could be natural, could be artificial. We need more data. Not this time. This time, we'll know. March 16th, 2026. The encounter happens, Juno watches, ground telescopes watch, and we find out whether humanity just confirmed first contact or watched a comet pass by. So here's what you need to know. March 16th, 2026. 3i Atlas passes within Jupiter's hill radius, closest approach to Euphemi one day later. If a new moon appears in Jupiter's orbit after that date, that's proof. Technological signature, no ambiguity. If you want to be here when that data comes back, if you want to know whether we just witnessed the deployment of an extraterrestrial probe, subscribe and turn on notifications. Because this isn't speculation anymore. This is a test with a clear result. And the answer is coming in two months. Get your popcorn ready. March 16th is going to be historic. I'll see you in the next one.